whole week of Yuletide treats in store for you, and today is no exception. Joining me in our own little winter wonderland, the perfect accompaniment to your mince pie. It's a small, sweet cherry. Cherie Murphy, everyone! <laughs> She's crackers, but she's still our own favourite little Christmas pig. It's Colleen <laughs> Nolan. <laughs> and the only old bird in Britain desperate for a good stuffing this Christmas is Carol McGiffin. <laughs> Keeping these ho ho ho's in order, it's me, Jolly Jackie Brambles. <laughs> Today, when it comes to presents, is it always the thought that really counts? Or should you speak up if your other half doesn't deliver the goods? Do you grin and wear it? Or are you first in the returns queue come Boxing Day? Plus, who needs three kings when you've got two queens? No, nope, Colin and Justin aren't back. But the dancing queen herself will be sashaying into the studio to tell us all about her new album. It's Emma Bunton. <laughs> Robinson could toast 1,000 editions of her hit TV quiz, The Weakest Link. It's Anne Robinson. <laughs> so here we are. We're back after two weeks' uh, break. Yes, Time indeed. to get all our Christmas shopping done. Cherie, of course, you were doing um, the commentary on It's a Celebrity. Yes, get me out of here. Yes, it's nice to be back, though. I missed you, girl. Did, did you? you? Yeah, did. Oh, whatever. <laughs> no, we did. No, we did, but we were watching you, so we, you were kind of here. Oh, no, it's yeah. nice to be back and really... Looking forward to Christmas as well. Was it strange being sort of the commentator doing a show about the jungle rather yeah. than actually being? Well, I think because because I've been in the jungle, I kind of this is the first year, obviously watching it, having done it myself. So it was quite interesting to watch it. Now I've been in it, and yeah. no, I enjoyed it, and I thought everyone was fabulous. I loved David Guest. I thought it was brilliant. It was so robbed. entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I was. laughs> and Colleen, though, you've had a good weekend, haven't you? I've had a great weekend. I was finishing off. Oh, let me tell you, I was finishing off my Christmas shop coming. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas <laughs> shopping, right? And I was, you know, you're all laden down with bags, and I saw these eight cabs, black cabs, and I thought, oh, jump in a cab to go home. Walking up to the cab rank, they all got out of the black cabs and started singing, I'm in the mood for dancing. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Oh! As I'm walking up to them, and you know when you think, I can't back away. <laughs> <laughs> so then they're all going, oh, get in my cab, get in my cab. I felt very famous. <laughs> and, um, so I got in the cab, right, and we're having a real laugh. It's like, yeah, yeah, hurry up, get me home. And um, the other guys were then radioing in and singing all Nolan songs over the radio. And then oh. talking about loose women, and it was all ha, ha, ha. And then when we got to my house, he went, you're not having it for free. <laughs> um, you so gave him a tip? I did give him a tip. Yeah. I said, stop singing Nolan songs. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it was great. So all the guys at Street Cabs, they were brilliant. Made my day. <laughs> OK, well, we're just a week away, of course, from Her Majesty's Address to the Commonwealth. But for those of you who just can't wait that long for a review of the past year, all this week we're bringing you our very own alternative Queen's speeches. So... Please be upstanding for the first of these as we hear one loose woman's personal take on the events of 2006. <laughs> oh. Many events have marked out 2006 as one of the most memorable in recent years. For example, I will never forget flashing the gusset <laughs> in national television. And being so needed by Neil Siddhartha. Oh, Carol, I am but a fool. Darling, I love you, to you, though you treat me cruel. For 2007, I have many hopes. I plan to drink twice as much, have twice as many holidays, work half as hard, and most importantly, get some action in the bedroom. <laughs> and finally, I remain forever yours. A loose woman. What is this? It's not wine. Can't you get a blooming decent drink round here? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> well done. Well, I have to say, uh, Nils Adarka singing to me was the highlight of my whole year, yeah. actually. Was it? Yeah, on the show. It really, really was. And, it, I, you know, that's it. I can go now and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Go on, then. OK. <laughs> 
can't wait for the rest of the week, the alternative Queen's messages. Oh. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> now, Christmas, as we all know, a bit stressful sometimes. So throughout this week, we're going to take the pressure off by offering our advice on your Christmas quandaries. The first this week comes from Sheila in Manchester. My mother-in-law has always made it clear she can't stand me. However, I've always had her to stay for Christmas every year. She criticises everything I do, buy, cook, and basically makes the whole thing a misery for me. I've tried talking to her. My husband has too, but she never changes. I'm fed up with her. Should I put my foot down this year and refuse to let her ruin yet another Christmas for me? Or should I grin and bear it? After all, she is family and she's got nowhere else to go. Sheila from Manchester. Wow. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> she is an old bag as well, it sounds Absolutely. like it, doesn't it? What do we think, Carol? Don't, don't be horrible. It's Christmas and you can't leave people, at, however awful they are, you can't leave them on their own at Christmas. And I think, really, she should just bite the bullet, put on a thick skin, you know, laugh and just invite around and get on with yeah, it. Yeah, but that doesn't give her It'll an be excuse to ruin her. Christmas, it is Christmas and everyone should be nice. And if she can't be nice, then she needs to learn a lesson. If but you're not she... going to be nice, then you're not. Come in, she have should... a Meals on Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you're so horrible! at this role reversal. I, I thought Carol would be bitter and twisted like... and say, leave her no, out in the cold. No, no, you only, your Christmas can only be ruined if you let it be ruined. If she yeah. lets her ruin it, then it will be ruined. You know, just put on your nice hat and be nice. It doesn't matter how horrible she is. You just go, <laughs> you're so funny, and get on with it, you know. I've been at the cooking show. Do you ever had you. any experience in that department at Not all? Not really. Or? I mean, because my mum's quite helpful around the house, but um, we have had like Harry's family over, but they're kind of the opposite. They don't do anything, so they just kind of don't help, and I'm running around stressed, you know, <laughs> trying to get the turkey done and everything. So it would be nice to have help, but I can understand, obviously, if this woman is just hideous, like an old dragon, mm. then, you know, she's going to ruin your Christmas. But I think it's one day, yeah. you know, it's just for lunch, and you just put up with it. Yeah, yeah but then it's exactly. one day every year where people always go, oh, it's Christmas Day, we have to be nice to everyone we've hated all year. Yeah. I mean, you've got to go with that! It's Christmas, you're meant to enjoy it. Yeah, but you need a bit of psychological no. warfare going on and you need to sort of try, Sheila, listen, try and involve her in it, give her responsibility for the spuds or the mince pies or whatever it is she usually complains about. No, so that's what you do. The bare I think that's what I would do, sort of say, no. you do the turkey however you like to do it, if you oh, didn't right, like my yeah. last yeah. year. Or... I get to do all the horrible job, Well, you peel all the veg. Take your hands stuck in about the giblets. I think if you give her too much attention, it's going to make her worse. I think really she just, like... Bring her around, sit her in the corner, ignore her. Give her a bottle. Her yeah. Yeah. yeah, give her a bottle. You know what she's going to be like, so just ignore yeah. her. You know. Spike all her drinks, and then hopefully she'll fall asleep, <laughs> and then everyone will have a lovely time. But no, I do think, I do think you should be nice to people you don't yeah, like at Christmas, nice especially if well. they're on their own. How, why have you suddenly turned into a horrible Because I like moon. being you for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, you. Yes, it is. <laughs> when, you were with, when you were together with Chris, did you sort of have in-law issues or Christmas issues or...? Um, no, no, no. Um, we either we, we either used to go when this is when I was married. We either used to go to his mum's or we'd go to my mum's, but not generally not on Christmas Day. But we did actually used to pick up all the old waifs and strays from the pub that had nowhere else to go <laughs> and bring them around to our house. Aww. Honestly, because you know you got to have a Christmas dinner, haven't you? And there's nothing sadder than someone sitting in their house on their own cooking a little Christmas dinner for one. I mean, like, just the thought of anyone doing that breaks my heart. I have got one, you know. <laughs> Oh, that is yeah. Nice. So no. It's a shocker, isn't it? It's time a good for a... thing. Oh, I need a quick lie down. It's time for a break. But when we come back, sledging Samba style into the studio will be Strictly Come Dancing star Emma Bunton, and the temperature will be getting even lower as the frosty yet feisty Anne Robinson gives the loose ladies a run for their money. Don't go away. Woo!